Bibles this morning, Psalm 4, Psalm 4, and uh, so much of the Psalms are written by David, and David's life, uh, it was uh, categorized by lots of trouble, and uh, lots of ups, and lots of downs, and all of them uh, with the promise of God, and uh, if you want to see what normal life looks like, you can see it a lot in David, because David's dealing with uh, trouble in his family. David's dealing with disappointment. David's dealing with sickness. David's dealing with death. David's dealing with trouble. And David's also experiencing a lot of joys along the way. Uh, I'm just going to tell you, if you're waiting for the moment that everything's perfect for you to be happy, you're never going to be happy. Uh, You're going to have to find your hope in the Lord. And David uh, gives perspective all through the Psalms on Uh, living life, dealing with life, and having peace and hope, even though you're dealing with life. And uh, we come to this passage of Scripture, and there's a theme I want you to see, and the message is titled this morning, It's Okay, God is Enlarging You. It's okay, God is enlarging you. You're going to see that word enlarging in here in just a moment, and uh, I think You'll see the point and praying the Lord will help you. And David in just a moment is going to say, Thou hast enlarged me. And uh, we're going to look at the enlarging work of the Lord in our lives. Psalm 4, the Bible says in verse 1, Hear me when I call, O God of my righteousness. Thou hast enlarged me when I was in distress. Have mercy upon me and hear my prayer. O ye sons of men, how long will ye turn my glory into shame? How long will ye love vanity and seek after leasing, Selah? But know that the Lord hath set apart him that is godly for himself. The Lord will hear when I call unto him. Stand in awe and sin not. Commune with your own heart upon your bed and be still, Selah. Offer the sacrifices of righteousness and put your trust in the Lord. There be many that say, Who will show us any good? Lord, lift thou up the light of thy countenance upon us. Thou hast put gladness in my heart, more than in the time that their corn and their wine increased. I will both lay me down in peace and sleep, for thou, Lord, only makest me dwell in safety. And we come to this passage of Scripture, verse 1 of the Bible says, Hear me when I call. O God of my righteousness, thou hast enlarged me when I was in distress. Thou hast enlarged me when I was in distress. I think it's interesting that you see uh, distress was the thing that enlarged David. And I want you to know, David wasn't saying, oh boy, I love distress, yay. But he was coming to the fact and the realization that life is Rich with distress. Sometimes we leave off the the de and we just say stressed. And all God's people said amen. There's some stress out there, no doubt. He says, because of the distress, Lord, you have enlarged me. Uh, You've made me bigger. You've made me better. You've made me stronger. You've made me more gracious and kind and humble. You've helped me through the trouble. And because of the trouble, I'm better. And I hope that I can help you with God's word this morning as you battle and deal with the distress that is coming and is there for all of us, the uncertainties, the troubles, the heartaches. I hope that we can get our hearts in tune with the fact that God has a miraculous, wonderful, loving way to take the distresses and enlarge us and make us better. And perhaps you're here and you're watching somebody you love suffer. You know, uh, I remember as a kid, the the burdens that you bear as a kid, uh, they're big to you. But now as an adult, I'm going to tell you something. The burdens I bear as an adult, they're big and sometimes they get overwhelming. But the burdens that hurt me and that cause me the greatest distress now are the ones that happen to my kids. Or the ones that happen to the people that I love. 
uh, I'm more burdened by them. But I want you to know something. God uses trouble for an eternal good purpose. And we talk about this verse all the time, and I don't apologize for bringing it back up. Romans 8, 28, the Bible says for that all things work together for good to them that love God. And I want to remind you that God is working through the distresses. God is working through the troubles. God is working, and he has a purpose. And David says it like this. He says, God, thou hast enlarged me. Now look, we don't love the enlarging process, but the enlarging process is great. Did you know that we can see how God has chosen to do things uh, in so many different forms and fashions? God wants to enlarge you spiritually and, and make you bigger as a person. Uh, the same way he wants to, to make you healthier. Now, how many of you love the process of getting healthy? Isn't it awesome? I love being on a diet. Uh, I love it, and it's just so much fun uh, not saying no to donuts. Do you know that I've been offered donuts like probably 10 times this week, and uh, I ate donuts at least 10 times this week. Uh, there was a couple times I had to chose them for myself, but I was just, I mean, people were tempting me to sin all the time. But uh, the process of getting healthy is tough. Uh, we love exercising. It's so much fun to to, to jog. I don't I quit jogging. Uh, it's so much fun to walk and exercise and, and it's so much now we don't like the process, right? Of so many things. It's it's so wonderful to be debt free, but the process is brutal. It's so wonderful to have the process. Now I want you to know the process of having an enlarged spirit to having uh, uh, to be having a, being strong in the Lord. The process is not fun, but I want you to know the end product is awesome. And you know that God loves you too much to not bring you to places in your life where He's going to enlarge you. Now I'll tell you, the devil wants to hurt you. He wants trouble to bring you down. But God has so designed that the devil's greatest device and the greatest harm that the devil ever wanted to cause you, God wants to use it for his glory. It's okay. You're battling, you're struggling, you're distressed. It's okay. God is enlarging you. Just imagine what God can do and what God wants to do with the burdens that you bear. Let's consider a few things. Number one, what does it mean to be enlarged? What does it mean to be enlarged? Now, what do you think the goal uh, for your life is, God's goal for your life is? That's when we think about, about, about growing and being bigger, and when we think about, about being stronger and mighty, we think, we think maybe just maybe we'll be, uh, be strong and we'll be powerful and maybe we'll be very successful. But I don't even understand something. What God wants in the enlarging process, God wants you to become more and more like Him. Now, David's going to talk about a few things here in this passage of Scripture. In verse 1, he says, Hear me when I call, O God of my righteousness. Thou hast enlarged me when I was in distress. Have mercy upon me and hear my prayer. There's two things that David's talking about here in the very first verse. He says, Lord, have mercy on me and hear my prayer. Now, I want you to understand something about the enlarging process for God's people. God does not want you to become more and more self-sufficient. God does not want you to become more and more self-dependent. God does not want you to become more arrogant and proud. God does not want you to develop in your heart some type of superstar mentality. God wants you to trust in God. That's important. Now, I want you to understand something. The most powerful people on the planet need God. All people need God. There's no exception. Everybody needs God. And so when God is enlarging and in the process of enlarging us, it's not because he wants to make sure everybody's under thumb. God wants to enlarge you and make you more like himself and humble you and want you to become more dependent on him because God wants you to have what is best. You can never live 
your best and have your best until you have made God the Lord of your life. Now, so David here, he is king of the nation of Israel. He's a wealthy person. He's a healthy man. He's a capable leader. He's led uh, thousands and thousands and thousands of people into battle. He's quite the fellow. He's got a resume that's quite long, including one day he killed a giant. (laughs) But David understands something about being a man. A man created in the image of God needs God. And there are times in our lives where we think, I don't need God, I got this all figured out. How many of you have been in seasons of life where everything's just kind of going your way? Everything's going your way. And you kind of forget that you even need God. It's like, it's no big deal. I can pay that bill. That's no big deal. I got the strength to make it up that hill. That's no big deal. I got the ability to get that done. Oh, that's no big deal. I've got friends and family that I can lean on. We can get this accomplished. No big deal. There's times in life when everything's going your way. You don't even think you need God. But let me tell you something. Any moment in your life where you think, I got this. I don't need God. Is a moment that you are living in great deception. Because there's never a moment that we don't need God. I love this little statement and song. I need thee every hour, most precious Lord. Isn't it true? Now look, God's enlarging process, God making you better, God making you bigger, God making you stronger, is God bringing you to the place where you know that you need His mercy. And in prayer, you know you need him. You need God. You know, sometimes we get really uncomfortable when we get knocked off of our high horse. I've been there. I come there occasionally. We get very uncomfortable getting knocked off our high horse. But let me tell you something. Anytime you're at a place where you think, you know, I need God. You're in a good spot. God is enlarging you. David said, I need mercy, I'm praying, Lord. Here's another thing he says in verse 2. He says, O ye sons of men, how long will ye turn my glory into shame? How long will ye love vanity and seek after leasing? Selah. Uh, Now, the next thing David looks at is he looks at folks who are opposing God. And he has a burden for them. He has compassion. You know what is big to God? Big to God is not somebody who's willing to scratch and claw and hurt anybody necessary to get to the top. That's not big to God. Big to God is anyone who's willing to have compassion on folks who need help. David's burden is like, he's like he has a burden. He's, he's meditating on, oh, how long, oh, sons of men, will you rebel against God? Now, now big to God is humility. Big to God is compassion. Big to God. Is faith. The Bible says, verse 3, But know that the Lord hath set apart him that is godly for himself. The Lord will hear when I call unto him. David makes a wonderful statement. He says, the Lord will hear me when I call. He's not being presumptuous. He's being rich in faith. Do you know that, that God wants you to be rich in faith? The, the day... That you have confidence that God is going to be faithful. The day that you are able in your heart to know that God loves you. The day that in your heart you're willing to care for others. The day in your heart that you know that you need God. That's a day in your life where you're going to be able to see God do great and mighty things. But the days that you spend angry at God because you didn't get what you want, the days that you spend angry at God because you don't think His way is how you want it to be, the days that you live in rebellion, they're not days that are big and great and awesome. You see, God wants to enlarge you. God wants to increase your faith. God wants to make you better. How does God enlarge me? Point number two. How does God enlarge me? How does God help me with humility, compassion, faith, my relationship? How does God enlarge me? Well, 
It's something that we don't like. The Bible says in verse number 1, Thou hast enlarged me when I was in distress. But what is it? Distress. Trouble is one of the main tools that God uses to bring us to the place where we know we can trust him. How does God enlarge me? He uses distress. God uses distress. Now, you can look at distress with the eyes that say, God is unfair, unkind, unloving, unjust. But I want you to know something, and you know it to be true too. If everything's going perfect for you, you become a spoiled brat, and you're good for nobody but yourself, and you're not good for yourself. But when God brings us to a place where we're humble and we seek Him and live for Him, the next thing you know, you have peace and joy and satisfaction. The next thing you know, you're a blessing to other people. The next thing you know, there's unity in your home. The next thing you know, things are going well. It's amazing how that works. You fight for yourself and see what happens. You're alone and miserable. You humbly serve God and fight for other people. And love the Lord and trust God. The next thing you know, you have friends. The next thing you know, you have peace. The next thing you know, you have joy. That's how God's designed our lives. How does God enlarge me? Distress, trouble brings me to the place that I'm more usable for God. How does God enlarge me? Distress, look at verse number 4. The Bible says, stand in awe. And sin not. Commune with your own heart upon your bed and be still. Selah. How does God enlarge me? I'll tell you, this is another thing we love, waiting. Look, the Bible says, stand in awe and sin not. This is quite the picture. I mean, things are so rough. There's so so much trouble. There's grief and there's burdens to be born. And the response that David says we have is like this. Oh my goodness, how am I going to deal with this? How am I going to stand in? So the Bible says that God enlarges us with waiting. The Bible says, stand in awe and sin not. Let me paint a little picture for you. Your worst nightmares come true. You've got the phone call. You got the news. You have an opportunity to respond in the flesh or in the spirit. The flesh, you get the news. You get angry. You lash out at somebody. You get the news. You get scared. You do something that is sinful or wrong. You get the news. You get depressed. and You look for relief and sinful behavior. But God says, wait. In the moment of distress, stand in awe and sin not. Now look, I want to encourage you to do that. This is just basic Christian living. You get bad news. You get troubling news. Something goes bad wrong. The first thing you need to do is wait. Stand in all, sin not. As a matter of fact, the Bible says, and I love this verse of scripture. It says, "Stand in all, sin not. Commune with your own heart upon your bed and be still. Be still." What does God want us to do? How do I deal with distressing moments in life? Ah! A lot of folks do. I mean, you just absolutely throw a rod. It's a good motor (laughs) illustration. You blow a gasket. You wipe out. You just go nuts. How many of you have ever been guilty of getting some bad news and just absolutely going nuts? If that's you, would you say, oh, me, on the count of three, one, two, three. Oh, me. Let me tell you something. If you'll remember that God uses trouble to make me better, And instead of absolutely losing your cool, you'll just stand still. Stand in awe. Sin not. 
Then the next phrase is quite fascinating. And it's very good practical advice. Commune with your heart on your bed. Now this may be the middle of the day, but I'm going to tell you something. I have, I have used this verse quite literally on numerous occasions. I've got something to deal with. I've got a decision to make. I've got a burden I'm carrying around. I've got something that is bigger than me, and I don't know what to do with it. And it's stressful on more than one occasion. I've quietly made my way to my bed. I'm one of these guys I like to sleep with a fan. I, I got a fan that blows right in my face all night long. It's wonderful. And on many occasions, I don't know what to do. I don't know how to respond. A lot of times I'm madder than a wet hen. I don't know what to do. But I know that if I make a decision right now, it ain't going to be right because I'm not right. So you know what I do? I head to the house. I head back in the bedroom. I turn my phone on silent and get it out of hand's reach. I turn that fan on, blow right in my face, and I just go lay down. If I fall asleep, good. If I don't, good. But for a while, I need to sit there or lay there. Me and God. And oh, how many times, how many times in that waiting moment has God helped you to make the right decision? You see, God enlarges us in waiting. We don't want to wait. We want to just absolutely drop A-bombs on mosquitoes. But God wants us to wait and do things right. He's enlarging us. He's enlarging us. You see, the enlarging process, he uses distress. He uses waiting. Stand in awe. Wait on the Lord. Commune with your own heart on your bed. Verse number 5. The Bible says, Offer the sacrifices of righteousness and put your trust in the Lord. How does the Lord enlarge me? Distresses lead to waiting. And waiting's not bad, it's good. Distresses lead to waiting. And then the Bible says, offer the sacrifices of righteousness. Now, you know, that's not very complicated. What are the sacrifices of righteousness? Just consistently doing the right thing. The sacrifice of righteousness. Let's talk about some sacrifices of righteousness. I think that you can offer some sacrifices of righteousness this week. As a matter of fact, I think that you've even begun your week wisely offering a particular sacrifice of righteousness. You're at church. Now, I'm just going to tell you, faithfully meeting with God's people will help you. Faithfully meeting with God's people, it will help you. Now, look, it's not easy. It's not easy. It's not easy to get up and come to church. It's not easy and I'm going to tell you, I know that the devil knows how effective it is for God's people to meet together. And I know the devil fights in homes to, get us, to keep us from coming to church. But if you'll faithfully attend church, I'm going to tell you something. God's going to enlarge you. Sacrifices of righteousness. You've got to find time every day to study God's Word and pray. You should know more about God and His Word. You should long for that. Look, do the right thing. Let me tell you something. You find yourself distressed. Perhaps you don't have the opportunity to go to the house and take a nap. And maybe it's not one of those that's that bad. Let me tell you something. You find yourself distressed. Take a minute and pray. Let me tell you. If you have this feeling, I don't feel like praying. I'm going to remind you of something. When you have this, I don't feel like praying. I don't want to pray. That is the perfect time to pray. Just remember that. Look, just prayer, praying. Lord, I need help with this right now. You see, God wants us to come to him. God wants, to offer, wants us to offer the sacrifice. If you'll just, just get in the habit of praying, Lord, help me. Or reading your Bible, it's a, it's a sacrifice of righteousness. It's something that I can do that I know is right. Doing the right thing, saying a kind word. Moments when you're so tore up about your own situation that you don't know how to even live. Take a minute and try to encourage somebody else. 
Offer a sacrifice of righteousness. The Bible says that God enlarges us as we deal with distresses, waiting on the Lord, offering the sacrifices of righteousness, standing in all, waiting on God. How does God enlarge me? Distress is enlarged me, but when I deal with the distresses of life, God's way, God makes me bigger. You know what happens? When you've had the worst of the worst happen, and as opposed to last time, you did it right this time. You waited on the Lord. You didn't overreact. You didn't blame God. When you see that God's way worked. You know what happens? God enlarges you. And you begin to know, hey, look, God's way worked last time. I think it'll work again. One of my favorite examples of God enlarging us is the story of David. You see, all through David's life, God was enlarging him, making him more and more able to deal with more and more trouble. Make him more and more capable to be what God had designed him to be. It was David's shepherd, shepherding and keeping the flock. And, and God giving him the ability to kill a bear and kill a lion. That gave him courage to know that he could kill Goliath. And it was his, God giving him the ability to kill Goliath. That gave him the ability to trust and know that he could overcome all the controversy and the trouble that was going on with Saul. And it was the victory over Saul and God's faithfulness through that Saul mess that helped him know that he could trust God through all the trouble he had with Absalom. David watched the troubles of the past and the victories that God gave and God enlarged him and made him know, hey, look, I can do. I, we're going to be okay. It's going to be fine. I've been pastoring for Nearly 20 years now. And uh, I remember when I first started pastoring the Bowling Springs Baptist Church as a senior pastor, I don't know, 16 years ago now, I guess, something like that. I remember problems coming to me. And I remember getting a call, and it would just, I mean, it, was, it would just tear me up. I was like, oh, no. They're going to fire me. The church is going to split. I don't know how I'm going to deal with this. And, and I think back about the things that stressed me so much when I was 27 years old. And I think, oh, wow, I can't believe that even bothered me. You don't, you're not calloused. I'm not calloused at all. But after 16 years of watching God be faithful, you know, things come down the pike. And you're like, this breaks my heart. I'm sad. But you don't worry about it so much because... God, God's proven himself. You know, God's going to be faithful. God can be trusted. And in all of our lives, God is enlarging us. He's, he's in, enabling you to deal with more. He's enabling you to be better for his glory. God is enlarging. How does God enlarge me? Distresses, waiting, righteousness. Finally, number three, what's the advantage of being enlarged? What's the advantage of being enlarged? Let me tell you something. There's a glorious advantage to being enlarged. The byproduct of the struggle is really sweet. Look what the scripture says, verse number 6. The Bible says, There be many that say, Who will show us any good? He says, There's lots of folks who criticize me, and that's fine. We can watch David already beginning to get victory. Folks are criticizing, and he's okay with it. It's going to be just fine. He says, Lord, lift thou up the light of thy countenance upon us. What's he say? He says, Lord, lift thou up the light of thy countenance upon us. He says, he says I'm asking God to give me his countenance. Now, we understand what a countenance is. This is my happy countenance. This is my mad countenance. This is my bored countenance. This is my goofy countenance. You understand countenance. Now just imagine for a moment the countenance of God. Now this is something that gives us an idea of, of the Lord. God's countenance. Now I want you to think about the greatest burden that you're bearing at this moment. Think about it. Now then, God cares about that burden. He really does. 
But I want you to look at God's countenance about your burden. Now, He cares about it. But let me ask you something. Does God have a worried countenance on His face that says, I don't know how this is going to ever be resolved? The answer is no. Does God have an angry countenance as if, uh, as if uh, you know, I'm mad because I came up with this plan. This is awful. No, He doesn't have an angry countenance. And I want you to know something. God does not have a frivolous, happy countenance that says, ha, 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 suck it up. But you look at the face of God as you face the worst of the worst. And I want you to know God's countenance is one of great confidence and resolve and peace. And God's countenance says, it's going to be okay. God's countenance says, it's going to be okay. You can trust me. You see, it's an advantage of being enlarged. When you get enlarged, when you've seen God faithful in the past, you can rest in the fact that God is going to make it okay. It's going to be okay. The light of the Lord's countenance is on your face. What's the advantage of being enlarged? The light of the Lord's countenance on your face is an advantage. Another advantage to being enlarged is gladness. Look at the scripture says in verse number 7. Thou hast put gladness in my heart. More than in the time that their corn and their wine increased. Thou hast put gladness in my heart. You may be at a moment in your life, you think, there's no way I could ever be glad in the situation I'm in. I'm going to tell you something. If you're trusting in the Lord, you can. I've watched folks go through the most grueling of circumstances. And all the while, God gives them gladness. Now look, if you're battling, I, I, I have compassion on your battling. But I want you to know that if you'll trust the Lord in your storm, you're going to find out that He can indeed make you glad. Gladness. Thou hast put gladness in my heart. More than in the time that their corn and their wine, more than riches and more than success, God will make you glad. Finally, number eight, verse number eight. I will both lay me down in peace and sleep. Look at those two words, peace and sleep. How many of you yearn your heart for peace? Yearn your heart for peace? You can only find it in the Lord. God will give you peace. Sleep. Oh, how often worry and troubles rob us of our sleep. You know, God wants you to rest in Him. You see, when we get enlarged and we deal with the burdens of life God's way, the next thing you know, God is going to give you gladness. God's going to give you peace. God will give you sleep. I think He, I know He can. The Bible says this For thou, Lord, only makest me dwell in safety. You see that word safety? You know one of my pet peeves? The phrase, safety first. I hate that. It's just not true. Look, if safety first was the goal, none of us would be here. Uh, I'm going to make some of you nervous as a cat on a tin roof, but do you know that there are germs all over this place? Don't stop coming to church because there's germs every other place you go to, including the doctor's office, which is the worst, and you still go there. I mean, if safety was first, you'd put yourself in a padded room somewhere. But I'm going to tell you something. The new material that they're making the padded rooms out of caused cancer. It's just a fact. <laughs> if safety's first, you do not ever get in your car and drive anywhere. Are you crazy? Safety's first. You stay home. But wait. Homes catch on fire. I heard of a home one time that the water heater exploded in. Safety first, no water heaters. Heat pumps. Gas furnaces can cause carbon monoxide poisoning and you can die. No heat. No air conditioning. No cars. No padded rooms. They cause cancer. Safety first. Safety first. Well, if safety's first, you can't do anything. You might as well just... 
go somewhere and be done. No, safety's not first. Baloney. Here's, here's what's right. Look, there's risk in everything we do. And the risk is one of the things that calls us to wring our hands. And the Bible says this. For thou, Lord, only makest me dwell in safety. How can I have peace? How can I have joy, gladness? How can I rest? I have to rest knowing that God will take care of me. And you know what happens? As we battle and deal with the things of life, the distresses, you know what God proves? Over and over again, God proves to us that he can be trusted. You see, it's going to be okay. You're battling and there's distresses and troubles, but it's going to be okay. I want to remind you, it's going to be okay. It's going to be okay. God's enlarging us. He's making us more like him. And he can be trusted. Oh, I pray you'll put your trust in him. Thank you, Lord, for enlarging us. Thank you for the enlarging process. We know we need the Lord. It's okay. God's enlarging you. Trust him.